Hi and welcome to a new episode of Waiko. It's the first episode in 2018. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I wish a Happy Merry Coptic and Eastern Christmas to all our audience who celebrated on January 7th. I hope you all had set your goals and you had clear resolutions for 2018 and you would achieve all of them. Pregnancy is not always associated with only physical and hormonal changes, but also associated with psychological changes and mood swings, and sometimes it develops to depression and other mood disorders during pregnancy and after labor as well. In today's episode, we'll talk about the psychological changes and depression during pregnancy and postpartum depression. Beside that, we'll talk about the role of, husband, of the husband to support his wife during pregnancy and after labor as well. And as you all know, happy wife is a happy life. It will be an honor and pleasure in White Coat to have Dr. Kirthi Sander back to talk about that, epi that topic specifically. And it's a very interesting topic. Dr. Sander is an outstanding psychiatrist in Southern California, and he's also run a research trial on postpartum depression as well. It's also an honor and pleasure to have Dr. Shoshana Bennett back on White Coat. And she's one of the best national speakers and authors about postpartum depression. For interaction with White Coat about today's topic, please send in all your questions to our official Facebook page, White Coat, or to talk to our guest about today's topic and send, send and if you have any questions for them, you can call the numbers that will be shown on the screen as well. And before I start today's episode, I would love to thank you all for all your support for White Coat. أعزائي مشاهدي قناة قنوات الكارما في كل مكان في العالم. في البداية بحب بتمنى إن أنتوا كلكم تكونوا قضيتوا كريسماس كويس وقضيتوا راس سنة جديدة وإن شاء الله تحققوا كل اللي أنتوا عايزينه وإن أنتوا زي ما إحنا قلنا الحلقة اللي فاتت كل واحد يكون قاعد مع نفسه وحط أهداف للسنة الجديدة وإن شاء الله يا رب تتحقق كلها في 2018. آه الحاجة الثانية إنه بتمنى كريسماس سعيد لكل الكريسماس القبطي أو لكل الأقباط اللي بيحتفلوا بيه أو الشرقيين بشكل عام اللي بيحتفلوا بيه يوم 7 يناير. النهارده في حلقتنا هنتكلم على الحمل بشكل عام والتغيرات النفسية والصحة النفسية للحامل بشكل عام. كمان هنتكلم على الاكتئاب اللي بيحصل أحيانا أثناء الحمل واللي بيحصل ما بعد الولادة. النهاردة عندنا اتنين من أفضل أفضل الحياة يعني أنا حاسس أنه فعلا شرف أن أنا أكون قاعد قدامهم النهاردة بحاورهم آه ومن أفضل الناس اللي بتتكلم على الصحة النفسية للمرأة الحامل وكمان آه بيتكلموا على الاكتئاب ما بعد الولادة الضيف الأولاني اللي معنا النهاردة دكتور ساندر وهو واحد من أحسن الناس اللي موجودين هنا في كاليفورنيا مش بس بيشتغل كلينيكال آه عليه بشكل عملي ولكن عنده آه بحث أبحاث علمية كتير جدا في المجال ده آه الضيف الثاني اللي هيكون معانا النهارده دكتور شوشانا بنت وهي الحقيقه عندها برنامج في الراديو بتاعها دكتور شوش آه كمان آه هي تقريبا افضل ناشونال سبيكر هنا في امريكا بيتكلم على الموضوع ده آه والحقيقه شرف ان انا اكون قاعد معاهم النهارده آه كفايه ان انا اقول لكم انه واحده عاده من كل خمس حوامل آه بيدخلوا في موضوع الاكتئاب ده اما اثناء الحمل يا اما بعد فتره الولاده موضوع مهم جدا وشفت انه لازم نتكلم فيه ونجيب لكم يعني تقريبا احسن متكلمين بيتكلموا في الموضوع ده زي ما انتم عرفتوا دلوقتي خلاص لو عندكم اي اسئله خاصه بالموضوع ده هتبعتوا لنا على صفحتنا الرئيسيه على الفيسبوك او لو عندكم اي اسئله عندكم للضيوف بتاعتنا ممكن تبعتوا لهم كل اسئلتكم النهارده على ارقام التليفون اللي بتظهر قدامكم على الشاشه في اي وقت اثناء الحلقه بحب كمان اشكركم على دعمكم والسبورت الكبير بتاعكم اللي عملتوه الوايت كود سواء على السوشيال ميديا او الحاجات اللي بتتبعت لي برايفت في الان بوكس بتاعي أه بشكركم جدا على تعضيتكم وعلى السبورت بتاعكم لوايت كود ويلا بينا نبتدي حلقتنا النهارده عن الصحه النفسيه للمراه الحامل واكتئاب ما بعد الولاده
Hi, I'm Dr. Shoshana Bennett, clinical psychologist. I started as a special education instructor. Uh, my first master's was in special education, and I ended up teaching at the community colleges in the San Francisco Bay Area, early childhood education, rehab therapies, psychology, uh, and special education. And once I had a child, I realized that there was very little help for new families, especially when they were experiencing extra difficulties, such as depression and anxiety. So I launched a, a career, a new career, into that specific field, and that is one of my specialties, the perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. And since then, I have written uh, numerous books on the topic, and uh, uh, love doing media and uh, on the radio. And really, I, what I love doing more than anything is working with individuals around the world, uh, whether they be new mothers or moms-to-be or new fathers uh, and families. But whatever crisis an individual or family is going through, my mission is to help them not only get through the crisis, but help them realize and see that they can emerge from whatever the challenge is happier and healthier than ever before. Along the way, there uh, have been publishers that have asked me to write books for them. Um, the first book, actually, I wrote with a colleague, uh, Dr. Peck Indman. Uh, we wrote uh, Beyond the Blues. It was the very first book of its kind uh, that not only was speaking to the public about perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, such as postpartum depression, uh, but it also was used and is used currently as a resource for professionals. Uh, Wiley uh, also asked me to write their dummies book. So I also wrote postpartum depression for dummies. And it's one of the, I'm happy to say, one of the classics and used as a staple in, uh, in professional libraries and, and help, uh, also helps women and their families recover from postpartum depression and, and also learn how to prevent it the next time around. I was also approached by a publisher who asked me to write a book called Pregnant on Prozac. There was at that time no resource that could be trusted as a comprehensive place to go that you could trust the information. Uh, we know that the internet is not a place to go when we want to find out what is safe, for instance, to take uh, uh, pharmaceutically during pregnancy or uh, during breastfeeding, for instance. And that book was written so that we could differentiate. The public could tell what was hype and what was to be trusted. And another book that I've written is Children of the Depressed. Uh, another publisher asked me to write a book for, uh, to really help intergenerational depression cease. So parents could learn how not to pass along depression to the next generation. And also adult children who had been raised by at least one depressed caretaker could heal completely. I have two grown children. And in my spare time, what I really love to do, other than an occasional gym, um, I love writing. So I will contribute to various uh, journals and magazines and really write about what my passions are and try to help as many people as possible as they go through their various psychological challenges. Stay tuned for me on White Coat on Alkarma TV.
Brain Tune Brain Optimization Nutraceutical product line. Our first product is the Brain Shake, which contains plant-based nutrients to help with energy, focus, vitality, and joy. Our second product is Turmeric, which is an Indian spice with anti-inflammatory and brain optimization properties. Our third product is the Brain Honey, which is a very sweet preparation that contains wonderful nutraceutical ingredients, cinnamon, ginger, and turmeric, in addition to the beauty of honey. To buy one of our Brain Tune Healthy products, please visit us on the Amazon link as seen on the screen, or visit our website at www.drcinder.com. Research Institute and Medical Director of the Breezes Relapse and Recovery Intensive Outpatient Program. I'm a board certified psychiatrist and integrative physician and creator of Brain Tune Brain Optimization Program and Nutraceutical Products. I'm also Assistant Clinical Professor of the UC Riverside School of Medicine and the creator of the first Functional Forum Evolution of Medicine series in Riverside, California. I'm a principal scientific research investigator for FDA-approved clinical trials. I'm the author of Amazon International Bestseller, Face Your Addictions and Save Your Life. I co-authored the bestseller, The Success Blueprint, with international speaker Brian Tracy. I began my journey in India, where meditation was a part and parcel of life. Unfortunately, in my early childhood, I had the experience of my beloved mother experiencing severe postpartum depression. That led to multiple challenges in our family as the principal attachment figure, the mother, was unable to function in the most optimal manner. This ultimately inspired me to be able to target brain and brain optimization as a life goal, as my dear mother continues today to inspire me about integrating the Eastern traditions that were so dear to her and the Western technology and neuroscience and giving human beings the best chance towards optimizing their lives, recovering from their problems and fulfilling their lives. My mother's journey was not only integral to my early advancement in obstetrics and gynecology, but also to my movement to the United Kingdom and to train under the auspices of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in London, and at high-risk pregnancy units, and at the Institute of Psychiatry in London, to understand the problems associated with pregnancy and postpartum depression and perimenopausal disorders, conduct research, and develop treatment protocols, but also have the good fortune of being recruited by the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine in the US to perform research and participate in a research track of residency training. Today, I'm delighted to be a guest on this show and very happy to be able to share my story and my passion as well as what we would love to accomplish at the Mind and Body Treatment Institute. أهلا بحضراتكم مرة تانية في فقرتنا الرئيسية النهاردة وموضوعنا الأساسي اللي هنتكلم فيه على الصحة النفسية للمرأة الحامل وكمان هنتكلم على دور الزوج في الحمل وهنأكد جدا على نقطة إنه أول ما ما الاثنين المتزوجين يعرفوا إن الزوج حامل الاثنين اكشولي حامل من من النهارده والاثنين هيشاركوا في ده والزوج له دور مهم جدا هنناقشه النهارده كمان هنتكلم على فتره ما بعد الولاده الصحه النفسيه للمراه الحامل الاكتئاب اللي بيحصل احيانا وهنفرق ما بينه وبين انه بس حد يبقى عنده مجرد انه المود بتاعه مش مظبط هنفرق ما بين ده وده وطرق العلاج الجديده بتاعهم آه بيسعدني ويشرفني ان يكون معايا اثنين زي ما انا قلت من احسن الناس اللي ممكن تتكلم على الموضوع ده Hanaptidi Mala Halaitum and Nahar. That's a pleasure and honor to be with both of you, Dr. Sunder and Dr. Bennett. Uh, Dr. Shorsh, I'll that's uh, 
that's the website, and America loves Dr. Shosh, right? That's, yes, correct. Uh, so it's an honor and pleasure to have both of you today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, Thank you. And uh, Dr. Shosh, in the beginning, um, that's what I said. As soon as the couples get to know that the wife is pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, we want to settle down a concept that the husband has a huge role in that too. Uh, so what is the husband role? How can the husband support his wife as soon as they know that the wife is pregnant? Even though, obviously, it's the woman who's growing that child, the husband needs to tell her, I am here for you. We are going through this pregnancy together. And if she can't do some of her usual tasks, he needs to step up and take care of them. If she needs to sit, she should sit. He needs to make sure she's eating well, that she's getting good rest and sleeping at nighttime, really supporting her through this. Okay. Uh, so basically both of them, as you told me, both of them are pregnant. Yes, <laughs> they are basically... both, <laughs> both pregnant, going through it together. Okay. Uh, في البداية أنا كان سؤالي ل ل ل لدكتور شوش إزاي إذا أول ما إحنا ككابل نعرف إنه إذا مراتي حامل إزاي أنا كزوج أتصرف آه وأتكلم معها فقلت لي رقم واحد الزوج عليه دور مهم جدا آه لازم رقم واحد إنه يفهم مراته إنه هم حيعدوا فترة الحمل دي مع بعض وده شيء مهم جدا إنه يبقى سبورت نفسي كبير جدا حاجة تانية لازم يقولها أنا دايما هكون معاكي ودايما هكون موجود فهنعدي تاني ده مع بعض حاجة الثالثة المهمة جدا وبناشد فيها كل الأزواج أنا عارف أنه المنتاليتي الشرقية بتاعتنا بتبقى أحيانا مش متقبلة ده ولكن إذا الزوجة ما قدرتش تقوم ببعض المهام المنزلية لأي سبب من الأسباب فلازم الزوج يفهمها أنه هو هيقوم بده وما فيش مشكلة ال... كمان الزوج لازم يبقى مجهز ومهيئ نفسيا أنه هو هيتعامل مع تغيرات كبيرة جدا في المود بتاع مراته أثناء فترة الحمل فيكون صبور شوية آه ويعرف انه آه بيتعامل مع تغير هرموني كبير جدا ولازم يبقى فاهم ومقدر ده. مهم جدا كمان وانا بناشد كل الازواج انه كل مواعيد الدكاتره لازم تكون مع مراتك فيها لانه ده بيديها سبورت نفسي كبير جدا زي ما انا قلت هما الاثنين هيعدوا الفتره دي ومهمه جدا. مهم جدا انه دايما الزوج يقوم آه ويتاكد ان مراته بتاكل كويس وبتنام كويس لانه ده مهم جدا. كمان من ال لو في جروبس بتقدر يعني احيانا بيبقى عندنا هنا ده يمكن مش موجود في مصر شويه ولكن عندنا هنا جروبس ممكن الست تروح لها تسبورت هير نفسيا آه يروح معاها ويشجعها انها تروح فمهم جدا انه يتاكد ان دايما مراته آه في صحه كويسه بتاكل كويس بتنام كويس هو دايما يكون معاها ويفهمها انه متفهم لتغيراتها النفسيه آه وانه مقدر ده تماما وان هما الاثنين آه هيعدوا بده مع بعض. اه دكتور شندر can women get depressed during pregnancy? Yes, I think this is a very important question. And, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Shosh and I have been treating women both in pregnancy and postpartum. And uh, um, the received wisdom is that women are going to be happy through pregnancy. But uh, both of us agree that, you know, about 15 to 20 percent of women actually experience depression in pregnancy. Wow. So it's almost like one out of each five get depressed during pregnancy absolutely one out of ten mm -hmm. approximately would uh, would get depressed and uh, you can imagine as a result of that um, such women will experience lower functioning through the pregnancy uh, they might not gain the appropriate weight that is necessary in order to have a fetus that is adequately nourished and uh, because uh, there may be stigma self stigma as mm -hmm. well as you know, social stigma associated with the understanding and conditioning that they have to be well, they might self-medicate with smoking and alcohol and so forth and cause further harm uh, to themselves, to the family and to the baby. During the pregnancy. Uh, so Ali, Dr. Sundar, and how did the state get depressed as a result of the pregnancy? Ali, the answer was from 15 to 21% of the state. Uh, بيحصل لهم الدبرشن ده اثناء الحمل uh, بيخليها انها مش قادره تقوم بال... بالوظائف اللي هي المفروض تقوم بيها uh, مش قادره تكسب الوزن او يعني تحط الوزن المناسب اللي هي المفروض الستات بيمشوا بستدي يبقى بجدول معين بيبقى ثابت ان هم بيزيدوا وزنا بطريقه معينه هي ما بتقدرش تعمل ده وبالتالي احيانا ان هم بي... بيضطروا ان هم يعالجوا نفسهم كمان في ستات بتدخن ستات بتلجا للكحول 
المفروض كل ده نبطله تماما اثناء فتره الحمل آه ففعلا الاحصائيات بتقول انه تقريبا واحد من كل خمسه الاحصائيات الثانيه بتقول انه واحد من كل عشرة من الستات بيجيت بريجنت بيجيت ديبرست او بيحصل لهم اكتئاب او المود بتاعهم بيبقى مش متظبط اثناء الحمل وباكد تاني على نقطه انه على الازواج تفهم ده تماما آه وانه يبقوا متفهمين ويقدروا يعني شويه يبقى في نوع من الحكمه في التعامل اثناء الفتره دي Uh, Dr. Sander, what's the outcome of depression for the baby? Does it affect the baby as well? Um, it's an excellent question, um, Dr. Thema, because uh, uh, because the mother is depressed, as we talked about it, um, they are not able to take good care of themselves, or they may not be, uh, you know, in a position to do so. That can fundamentally affect the birth weight of the newborn baby and the fetus. Um, it can also result in a higher risk for premature labor. So before term, the baby may be born. And overall, uh, the growth of the baby, what we call as intrauterine growth retardation, that is uh, also a risk factor of untreated depression in pregnancy. The truth is, I was asking Dr. Sander, if this happened, does it affect the baby? Yes, it affects the baby. Sometimes the baby is a little bit less than 2.5 kg, and it affects the baby a lot. احيانا الديبرشن ده بيؤدي انه الست تولد قبل ميعادها الطبيعي قبل 37 اسبوع آه وزي ما انا قلت انه النمو العقلي والمعرفي للبيبي بيقل جدا ففعلا له آه زي ما بنقول تاثيرات يعني قويه جدا على البيبي فلازم يتم معالجته والاول قبل ما يتم معالجته يتم معرفه انه في ديبرشن اساسا او في اكتئاب او المود مش متظبط ده حاصل ولازم نتعامل معاه عشان ما ياثرش على البيبي Uh, Dr. Bennett, uh, does it make any difference statistically wise or outcome wise if the pregnant lady got depressed in the first trimester or third trimester, for example? The longer she's pregnant, the risk of depression following delivery increases. So if she's depressed at about uh, 18 weeks or so pregnant, she's at, uh, at a threefold risk. Wow three times the risk to develop postpartum depression. And if she's depressed towards the end of her pregnancy, the risk doubles to like six, six times. So she's not only depressed and unhealthy herself. And as Dr. Sunder was explaining, it can also affect the, the, baby. the baby, the growing baby. And, it, and her depression is affecting the rest of the family as well. So everybody can be affected. And she makes herself uh, in, a, in a, a very difficult position for being set up for being a depressed new mother as well. And there are repercussions health-wise to the whole family for postpartum depression. So it's very, very important to screen and to detect as early as we can that there is depression during pregnancy. As quickly Absolutely. as possible. Absolutely. Dr. Shash can I different is the set of the family that جالها الاكتئاب ده اثناء الـ 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 احنا بنقسم الحمله عشان حضراتكم تبقوا عارفين لثلاث مناطق او كل 12 اسبوع تقريبا بيبقى مرحله فالمرحله بتاع ال 12 اسبوع الاولاني سالتها تفرق لو الست بقت مكتئبه اثناء ال 12 اسبوع الاولاني او ال 12 اسبوع الاخراني مثلا من الحمله قالت لي ايوه بتفرق فرق كبير انه مثلا لو الست حصل لها الاكتئاب ده في الاول في الـ في الفيرست تريمستر يعني او في اول ثلاث شهور من الحمل Uh, تقريبا uh, بيزيد بنسبه ثلاث اضعاف ان هي uh, بيجي لها اكتئاب ما بعد الولاده. Uh, واذا حصل انه الاكتئاب ده بدا معاها من اخر فتره الحمل uh, يعني ناحيه الولاده اللي هم في اخر ثلاث شهور بيزيد بنسبه ست اضعاف انه يحصل لها اكتئاب ما بعد الولاده فمهم جدا زي ما انا قلت ان احنا uh, نعمل ديتكشن بدري او ان احنا uh, يعني دايما نتاكد انه المراه في صحه نفسيه جيده اثناء فتره الحمل اثناء فتره الحمل كله عشان آه نقدر آه نفهم لو في اي نوع من الاكتئاب آه حصل. Uh, so depression during pregnancy Dr. Shash. What are the symptoms uh, of depression during the pregnancy? How can we detect it? A pervasive low mood. So a low mood that continues. Sometimes the woman will say she feels numb. She doesn't feel a lot of anything. If she has appetite issues, usually a loss of appetite, which isn't normal at all during mm -hmm. pregnancy. We think of a, a normal being an appetite increase as long as she's finished with the morning sickness and things. And 
appetite decrease, that's a problem. Sleep issues such as insomnia, a difficulty sleeping at nighttime right. when she has a chance to sleep. All of these things, and there, there are certainly others. That's not comprehensive, but, but those are some of the basic symptoms that like will... Like landmarks to, to look at always. Exactly. Um, and Dr. Sander, how it affects the maternity, the maternity fetal axis, as you were explaining? Yeah, you know, uh, what we have understood, uh, you know, with sophisticated research now is that, uh, uh, you know, the mother has this important task of balancing both herself and her baby, the fetus. Okay. You know, so it's like she has two things to manage. And, um, you know, both of them are dynamically interacting with each other. And what we understand is that when the mother is depressed, the stress is put on the centers of the brain that are associated with the release of cortisol, the corti cortisol releasing hormone. hormone. And that entire stress axis is disrupted when the mother is either anxious or depressed. And that then has repercussions on the developing fetus. So I think what we have to understand is why uh, untreated depression is a risk um, and treating depression also has its own risk. Uh, so an increase in cortisol, of course, is associated with the increased incidence of depression or it increased the chances of depression to happen during pregnancy. That is true. Uh, that is true in a sense that it's a bidirectional uh, effect, essentially. You're stressed out, your cortisol levels are, and then the cortisol levels increase. And as Dr. Shosh was mentioning, then it starts affecting your appetite, it starts affecting your sleep architecture, and so on and so forth. So it becomes a loop. Okay. Um, so, Ali, the two that were with me were about what are the signs of depression or the signs that I can't find that there was a depression for the mother. Dr. Shosh said to me three things that are very important. One is the sleep. If she doesn't sleep, she will put her under stress. And it will be possible that there will be depression or pain. The other thing that is very important is the sleep. She said to me that the sleep, in the first three weeks, will be a little bit. ولكن إذا فضلت على اللو سايد ده أو إن هي قليلة بعد أول ثلاث شهور دي ساين مهمة جدا لازم نبص عليها كمان قالت لي إنها بتبقى زي الحد اللي هو منمل لا هو مبسوط ولا مش عارف يحس بحاجة ومش عارف ينبسط رغم إنه المفروض إنه في معظم الأوقات يعني إنه بيبقى حدث سعيد وكل الناس بتبقى مبسوطة بيه دي بتبقى مشاعرها يعني نم تماما منملة تماما يعني ما فيش أي إحساس بإنه كويس أو وحش دكتور شندر الحقيقة قال لي كمان إنه من ضمن الأعراض إنه بيزيد نسبة الكورتيسول وده هرمون مهم ده من الاسترس هرمون أو من الهرمونات اللي جسمنا بيفرزها لما نكون تحت ضغط كبير وده بيقلل الـ 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 بيزود أنا آسف نسبة إنه يحصل ديبرشن عن الطبيعي لأنه دلوقتي الأم مطالبة إن هي تاخد بالها من نفسها وتاخد بالها من البيبي اللي في بطنها فده مهم جدا إنه هي تاخد بالها من الاثنين uh, Dr. Shandler, if the mom get depressed during pregnancy, what's the treatment options? Because as you know in the culture, the moms doesn't like to take any kind of medication. So if you can explain if she can take medication, she can't. If, and if she can't take medication, are those meds will affect the baby or will harm the baby somehow? That's an excellent question, um, Dr. Hema, because um, what we are understanding, as I was explaining, is that um, we now have a situation where a mother is depressed and there is uh, the fetus and then there's the mother as well. And there are risks associated with, you know, systemic ingestion of medications right. and so forth. However, what we also understand is untreated depression has its own risk. Right. You see, so that's the balance. And therefore, uh, mothers should be encouraged to connect with their obstetricians and their psychiatrists to make an informed decision based upon what we call a risk-benefit analysis. Each mother is different. Her conditions and her, um, you know, um, cultural value system whereby they can make an informed decision is different. And I think that's what we need to do to recognize that both medical management can take place with antidepressants, mood stabilizers, and so forth, non-pharmacological management with supplementation such as omega-3 fatty acids, light therapy, acupuncture and so forth and of course most importantly as Dr. Shosh she is an expert a world expert on what she has done in her entire lifetime which is psychotherapy you know effective psychotherapy can manage that so you're telling me they can't take because sometimes they need like a definite answer here 
Yeah. They can take medication or they cannot take, or it's a cost benefit ratio. Um, they can take medications, but that uh, part of that discussion really needs a very good consultation with a trained OBGYN who understands peripartum conditions as well as a trained psychiatrist to really sit down and explain because there will be several situations where non-systemic uh, management may not necessarily completely address the symptoms of depression okay. in which case medications might become necessary and that has to be done in conjunction with all the other modalities to decrease the amount and dose of medications that would be utilized in pregnancy. Okay. Uh, so early with the soil مهم جدا ويمكن كل السيدات الحوامل بتساله لانه كتير جدا من السيدات الحوامل بتخاف تاخد اي medication او اي ادويه بالبق لانه بيحسوا ان ده بيأثر على البيبي وطبعا ده 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 مظبوط لحد كبير ولكن في حالات الدبريشن تحديدا زي ما دكتور ساندر قال انه ممكن نعالج بادويه وفي قبل ما نوصل للادويه في طرق ثانيه غير الادويه عن طريق العلاج النفسي عن طريق طريقه تغذيه معينه هنشرحها اثناء الحلقه عشان ده مهم جدا طريقه تمرينات معينه نقدر نشتغل بيها كمان في اخر حاجه قال لي الادويه ولكن اذا الام الحامل قررت تاخد النوع ده من الادويه لازم يكون تحت استشاره طبيب ودلوقتي حاليا بنعالج بنوع معين من الادويه للاكتئاب اثناء فتره الحمل وما بيبقاش له الاضرار الكبيره فممكن السيدات الحوامل تاخد علاج للدبريشن لانه قال لي لو احنا سيبنا الاكتئاب ده من غير علاج خالص هتبقى اخطاره اكتر بكتير جدا من انه لو خدنا ليه علاج دكتور شوش before we get to postpartum depression specifically what are the other depression what are the other conditions that look like uh, postpartum depression um, and what are the differences between uh, those kind of conditions what's totally normal is the baby blues yes that let's is start not with the disorder. normal okay yeah that's normal most women up to 80% go through some mild ups and downs and tearfulness and a little bit of moodiness and things that's completely normal baby blues will begin the first week following delivery and it should be gone by about two weeks following the, the delivery so it's first of all you're telling me it's some kind of adjustment and it's part of normal adjustment okay absolutely okay. not considered to be a disorder okay. at all and it starts one week after i'm just trying During to stress on those points right. okay so usually around day three okay and it goes completely after two weeks. It should be gone okay. by about two weeks. So many times women will contact me saying these blues just won't go away and it's been months. It's not been the blues for a long time. If it doesn't go away and it continues, even if the symptoms are very mild, we now call it a postpartum depression. It might be a mild depression, okay. but it does need some intervention. Typically blues, with normal support and a wonderful wellness strategy, it goes away on its own. Okay, yeah. and what are the symptoms of those like blues? The blues symptoms are, are tearfulness, some mild mood swings, um, very, you know, the woman generally will feel like herself, just, just teary. Get emotionally. She might somehow. cry for okay. no reason at all. You okay. know, it might even surprise her, okay. you know. Um, and, and feelings of some stress, of course, there's a baby in the house, feelings of dependency. She doesn't sleep. Right, and she's healing possibly from stitches. I mean, right. there's, a, there's a lot of adjustment Factors. going on. But, but again, the, the, the symptoms should not get in the way of her daily functioning. And taking care of her babies and the way she feels toward the baby, that shouldn't change. Correct. Okay. Correct. Now, postpartum depression is a disorder. That happens to, as Dr. Sender was explaining, at least one in ten, at mm -hmm. least ten percent. And depending on the research study right. you look at, it might say one in five. One in ten or one in five. Exactly. Right. Uh, so, with postpartum depression, if you ask a woman, "Do you generally feel like yourself?" She'll answer something very different than somebody with the normal baby blues. She'll okay. say, "I lost myself. I don't right. know who this is. This is. I feel like a shell of my my old self." And those symptoms do get in the way of her daily functioning or her ability to sleep at night. If there's any difficulty. So with, it really interferes it, with her daily activities. Completely. It interferes with her, with her life, with her daily functioning. And postpartum depression doesn't necessarily go away on its own. And I know we're, we're going to get there a little right. bit later. Now, there's a lot of fear about postpartum psychosis. 
Uh, it's very. First, I have a question oh, before please. we get to the please. postpartum psychosis. Yes. Postpartum depression, the mom, the way she feels toward the baby, does it change? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. No, one of the myths of postpartum depression is that the mom will not feel bonded yes. to the baby. That's why I that wanted to clarify. That can happen. Yes, and I'm so glad you asked. That can happen. There can, feel, there can be a feeling of, of distance or, 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 or not feeling close to the, to the baby. That can happen, but not always. Okay. Sometimes the mother is beautifully bonded uh, with the baby. But she's Everything depressed, else so. might feel like it's falling apart, okay. but that part might feel fine. And that's a, another myth that women will always feel the same way. She'll always be crying with postpartum. She'll always, she'll, she won't be able to get dressed. She'll be in her bathrobe. She... Not necessarily. It might look different for each woman. And some, again, are feeling close to their babies. Some, we need to work on the bonding a bit. Okay. What about the postpartum psychosis? Postpartum psychosis is a scary one. It's, it's mild, uh, mild. It's severe. It's always considered a, a medical emergency. But it's very rare. About okay. one to two per thousand women will experience a psychosis. You don't wait to see what's going to happen. If a woman is psychotic, she needs to go immediately to the hospital. And it happens right away? Or? It typically overlaps the baby blues period. So around that first week, just a few days postpartum, typically that, the psychosis is going to hit. So if, if that is how her brain uh, is affected, if that's how it's going to react, it reacts quite quickly. Okay. Yes, and by, by the first month, postpartum, if she has not gotten help before, she's going to be in a full-blown psychotic episode. So there is hallucination associated with it? There, yes. Changes the way she feels toward her baby, right? Or it Not necessarily, okay. but she will be hallucinating. She'll be seeing things other people don't see, hearing things other people don't hear. She might have kinesthetic uh, hallucinations like feeling like spiders are crawling up her arm. She, she is in another reality. Okay. Yes. She's in a different world. In She's her in, own world. She might go back and forth, which is a tough thing. But, uh, you know, some for some minutes she might seem perfectly normal, and then the next minute she might be thinking like messages are coming from her radio. Right. Uh, you know, is it so any kind of hallucination, it, it, visual or auditory hallucination? Exactly. So it can be what we call mercurial. It can go back okay. and forth, but sh it will be fairly clear. Yes. And sometimes uh, loved ones will notice the mother acting a little bit odd, mm -hmm. saying things that don't quite make sense. And their mistake is that they don't follow up and make sure she gets an assessment. Uh, so, Ellie, Dr. Shosh, can I ask you what the conditions that happen after the birth? What is natural and what is not natural? The natural thing is that there is a change in the mood that you feel that you are not happy. We call it baby blues. This is a kind of a change in the new situation. Of course, the mother has not done this before. The baby gets her, she feels that she is stressed, she doesn't sleep well, she always sleeps well with the baby. آه ممكن دايما نلاقي الام في الحاله دي بتبقى ستريس شويه المود بتاعها مش متظبط آه احيانا بتعيط من غير سبب وده قالت لي مهم جدا ان احنا نفرق بين دول بيحصل عاده في اول اسبوع وعاده بيحصل حوالين اليوم الثالث لانه هي بتحاول تتكيف مع الوضع الجديد وما بيستمرش اكتر من اسبوعين اثنين فقط لا غير اذا استمرت الاعراض اكتر من اسبوعين اذا احنا بنواجه مشكله نفسيه محتاجين نشوف متخصص لده يبقى حاول تاني البيبي بلوز او التكيف مع الوضع الطبيعي او المود اللي مش متظبط ده ممكن يحصل خلال اول اسبوع وما يستمرش اكتر من اسبوعين تحت اي حال من الاحوال. الديبريشن او اكتئاب ما بعد الولاده آه قالت لي ده عاده بيستمر اكتر من اسبوعين آه كمان بنشوف فيه ان الام بتتغير تماما مع الوضع آه مش عارفه تستمتع حتى بالبيبي بتاعها مش عارفه تستمتع بحياتها ولكن الفرق عن الطبيعي ان الام الثانيه تحت ستريس بس علاقتها مع البيبي كويسه جدا فحالات الدبريشن ما بيحصلش قوي ان العلاقه مع البيبي بتبقى زي الطبيعي كمان بتحصل كل اعراض الدبريشن اللي شرحناها في الاول والنقطه الاهم انها بتستمر اكتر من اسبوعين الحاله الثالثه بيحصل نوع من الهلاوس السمعيه والبصريه وده بيحصل لواحده من كل 2000 واحده حامل بيحصل بنسبه اقل بكثير جدا ولكن بيحصل انه تبتدي الام يحصل لها هلاوس سمعيه بصريه تشوف حاجات تحس بحاجات 
ده مش موضوعنا قوي النهارده ولكن هو جزء من اللي احنا بنتكلم عليه بشكل عام للصحه النفسيه في مرحله ما بعد الولاده Dr. Timmer, with your permission, I want to add one quick sure, thing about sure, psychosis. Sure. Almost always, when you see the very sad situations on TV about mother harming child or even killing child, that is almost always a, a psychosis, situation with depression. psychosis, not postpartum depression. Typically, women with postpartum depression are trying incredibly hard to protect their kids from their own depression. Women who are psychotic, these can be very, very good people. But they're hallucinating and they're delusional. And she, she might think that the baby is a doll or a water rat. Okay. And so she might harm that child. The fact is, Dr. Shush, there is a very important point that the brain and the brain that is happening to this is always a problem because the mother can harm the baby. And I said, we see cases that the mother can harm the baby because of this. So she wants to add this point that if she gets to the point that the mother will harm the baby, then it will be in the third stage. It will not be with the treatment or the natural stage. Dr. Shander, when it comes to postpartum depression, we usually start with the definition of the disease. So what is the definition of postpartum depression? Uh, when it happens, um, and when I, mean, when I mean, what I mean by when it happens, I mean by statistics, outcomes, and all that stuff. Absolutely. Um, you know, very eloquently described by Dr. Shosh about, you know, these uh, three possible, you know, iterations, if you like, of postpartum changes that happen. And in about 15 to 20 percent, and depending upon the statistical study, uh, mm -hmm. you notice that, you know, uh, mothers can suffer from postpartum depression. The onset typically uh, can be very gradual, but it can also be rapid, and it can begin any time in the first year, you know. Mm -hmm. um, symptoms often peak uh, anywhere between three and six months. And, um, you know, as we were discussing earlier, untreated, these symptoms can become chronic, and I think you know, if there was one thing that, you know, Dr. Shosh and I agree uh, upon is that uh, completely is that postpartum depression needs to be treated and there are efficacious treatments and it's an eminently treatable condition. Yes. Okay. Untreated, it becomes chronic and up to 25% still de remain depressed at one year postpartum, wow. which I think has tremendous impact as we will be discussing on the children, on the spouse, and in, uh, for the society in general. And on the father, of course. Like of course, of course. <laughs> uh, Every uh, relationship within that family within is the affected. Family. It's, it's yeah. a public health issue. Right. It's not a woman's issue. Right. Uh, so, Ali, Dr. Sandra, can you tell us about postpartum depression or the after the ايه هو الـ 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 الاخطار اللي ممكن تحصل منه؟ قال لي انه تقريبا زي ما احنا قلنا بيحصل كل الاستاديز معظمها بيقولوا انه واحد من كل خمس ستات بيجي لها النوع ده من الاكتئاب بعد الولاده آه بيبقى طبيعته انه تصاعدي بشكل عام بيبتدي انه لو مود وبعدين بيتصاعد بشكل عام كمان الـ الـ زي ما انا قلت انه بيقعد اكتر من اسبوعين ودي نقطه مهمه جدا وبيوصل لذروته او القمه بتاعته ما بين ثلاث لست شهور بعد الولاده لانه دي نقطه مهمه جدا والنقطه اللي قالها دكتور شاندر كمان مهم جدا ان انا اقدر اتعرف انه في مرض واقدر اروح للمختص اللي يعالجني لانه لو ما اتعالجش هيبقى اكتئاب مزمن وهنتعامل مع كل المشاكل وهنقول بعد كده آه ايه هي المشاكل اللي بتحصل معاك. سو دكتور شوش وات ار ذا سيمتومز اوف بوست بارتم ديبرشن؟ And here we have to stop at each point and explain like more like how the woman uh, perceive each like each of those symptoms. Well, often there is a low mood, there is sadness. But sometimes throughout the years, I have been called by women who say, I'm not really sad, Dr. Shosh, but I can't relax. I'm so tense and I'm snapping at my toddler and I'm yelling at my husband and I know he doesn't deserve it and I, then I feel terribly guilty. So sometimes it's short-temperedness okay. Okay? And, and, and other times it's more anxiety. She just can't calm down. Right. She might be moving very quickly and, and unable to to relax. So if anyone in the, you know, who's listening today and watching, if you have a picture of what postpartum depression looks like, get rid of it. Because depending on each individual person, it might look different, it might feel different. So each case is a different scenario. 
It is. Okay. It is. That's why there's no cookie cutter yeah. approach to oh, treatment, as Dr. Sunder was, was explaining. It all has to be so individual, depending on the symptoms happening, depending on uh, the woman's feelings about the treatment. You know, all of this needs to be in con consideration. Overwhelm is almost always present. Overwhelm meaning the things that used to be simple for her. She never thought twice about it. Well, well, suddenly everything feels difficult. Yeah. I remember going through this, and in my living room, the thought of walking to the kitchen and washing that one pot that was staring at me for yeah. a week, that was too much. Yeah. Everything felt like too much. Right. So it's going to surprise her. It's like she's going to, unless she understands that this is a real illness so and a condition. So you're talking now experientially, too. I am. Not, not just from that. Oh, academic. that's why I do this okay. work. It came directly out and, of my experience. And Dr. Shoshi, if I may, sure. you know, uh, for the benefit of the audience all over the world, Dr. Shosh is a great example of someone who took effective action, worked on it, and became well, and raised wonderful children. And I think yeah. you would agree that effective treatment is key. And okay. her dedication to this uh, in a lifetime is incredible. Extraordinary. Oh. Uh, I Thank agree. You. That's very kind. I agree. Thank you. Uh, so what else of the other symptoms? Uh, if there is a difficulty sleeping at nighttime when she has a chance to sleep, in other words, when her baby is sleeping, but she is having a hard time, this is not normal. Okay. And she needs to... If she hasn't already gotten into treatment, she absolutely does. Insomnia is not normal. Okay. If, she, if she has the kind of fatigue that doesn't get treated when she, it doesn't get helped automatically when she rests, the kind of fatigue that even when she sits and rests, she's still tired, this is also okay. a, a very, very common symptom of postpartum depression. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Dr. Shoshana, and... Uh, ايه هي اعراض الاكتئاب ما بعد الولاده قالت لي رقم واحد انه الست بتبقى دايما في حاله حزن شديد في حاله احساس بالذنب بشكل عام لانه طبعا بيبقى المود بتاعها سيء فبتبقى سيء يعني بتتعامل مع اللي حواليها بشكل مش طبيعي دايما احساسها بمشاعر جواها مشاعر غضب عايزه تطلعها على اي حد وده مفهوم طبعا قلقانه طول الوقت حاسه ان عليها حاجات كتير لازم تعملها حاجه تانية مهمه ما بتنامش كفايه ومهم جدا ان احنا نقول لكل ام انه الوقت اللي بينام طفلك فيه حاولي تنامي معاه فيه عشان صحتك النفسيه انت طبعا حاسه باجهاد شديد جدا طول الوقت ده مهم جدا ان احنا كل الاعراض دي نلقطها بدري قوي بالذات في مرحله بعد الولاده زي ما انا قلت لو استمرت اكتر من اسبوعين هيبقى في مشاكل تانية ولازم نسال مختص بشكل عام what else of the symptoms that she can... When her appetite, typically it decreases, when her appetite shifts dramatically, sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes she, she doesn't feel satiated ever. She just keeps eating and eating. But typically there's a loss of appetite, especially when there's some anxiety. <laughs> okay. When her emotions are all over the place. Okay. You know, when, when she might feel anxious in the morning at 10 o'clock and at noon she might feel almost herself but by 2 p.m. she's depressed it's that makes it harder to treat so too. as a husband we will deal with different personalities well, I don't know about different personalities <laughs> okay. but that, that might be <laughs> a right. bit a bit intense but uh, it definitely there will be some some the moods feel like they're on a roller coaster okay. and she never knows how she's going to feel at any given moment. It can be very, very difficult to live with. Okay. Sometimes she has discomfort being around the baby, especially if she's not feeling the feelings that she thinks a new mom should have okay. towards her baby. So she if there's a lot enjoy of- her, like herself being a new mom. It can get in the way of her enjoyment and her feelings of closeness with the baby. If, if the mom is, is holding the baby out here and calling it it, Oh. Instead of he or she, <laughs> or she, you know, that can be an indication after a couple of weeks that, that right. she, she needs some help there. She is going to have a difficult time concentrating or focusing, not just the normal, I forgot my keys in the video, but she might miss her appointments with the doctor. Okay. I mean, it, it might be m much more uh, severe than that. And yes, she, she won't be enjoying the things that she enjoyed 
previously that with my clients I might I might there's one client in particular <coughs> I said to her so how will we know when you're coming back you know when you're getting your real self back she said well I always used to enjoy singing in the shower but I'm not singing at all right okay. now. so when she started to see you know, she came right. in and said I'm singing Dr. Shosh I'm okay. you know that was a good indication she's back yeah اه انا سالتها هي عن باقي الاعراض اللي ممكن يعني نشوفها قالت تغير تغير طبعا في الشهيه وده اتكلمنا عليه مهم جدا مشاعرها او المود بتاعها قالت بيبقى عامل زي القطر بتاع الملاهي كده اللي هو شويه فوق يعني وشويه تحت كمان ما بتبقاش عارفه تستمتع بالبيبي بتاعها بتفقد تركيزها تماما زائد كمان نقطه مهمه بتفقد الحاجات اللي كانت بتستمتع بيها ما عادتش بتستمتع بيها زي الاول كل دول زي ما انا قلت لحضراتكم كل الاعراض اللي اتكلمنا فيها دي لو استمرت اكتر من اسبوعين بعد الولاده انت لازم هنا تسال نصيحه طبيب مختص. دكتور شندر وات ار ذا ريسك فاكتورز ذات كونتريبيوت تو ديفلوبمنت اوف بوست بارتم ديبرشن؟ ابسوليوتلي وات وي هاف اندرستود وذ اوت ستاندينج ريسيرش كونداكتد ان ذا لاست 50 اود ييرز اور سو is that there are several risk factors that predispose a woman towards postpartum depression. Okay. You know, a personal or family history of depression makes a woman more vulnerable to experience postpartum depression. A personal history of previous postpartum depression puts them almost at about 50, over 50% of mothers who've had previous postpartum depression may have a recurrence of postpartum depression. If they've been depressed or anxious during pregnancy, over 50% of those women also could experience uh, postpartum depression. Uh, those women who have had problems with birth control pill and okay. they have experienced mood changes uh, and so forth are also at risk. Uh, and finally, um, women who don't have uh, sufficient socio-economic um, support, uh, they too could experience it. Um, uh -huh. There is some understanding that postpartum thyroid issues uh, can mimic postpartum depression uh, symptoms. Uh, and so effective treatment of thyroid problems in the postpartum period, discrete from postpartum depression, is important. Okay. So thyroid issues should be ruled out completely? Thyroid issues should definitely be ruled out completely. Okay. Um, so, Ali, Dr. Sander, and what are the factors that are different from one to the other, or that are different from one to the other, or that are more likely to be able to deal with the idea of the pregnancy after the birth? Ali, if there is a family history, if the mother of the son 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 of the لو ما تعالجش هيوري حي... ان احنا بيورينا ان احنا البوست بارتم ديبرشن او اكتئاب ما بعد الولاده بتبقى فرصه زياده ازيد بكتير جدا من الاول آه حاجه ثانيه قالها مهمه جدا انه مشاكل الغده الدرقيه لو في مشاكل في الغده الدرقيه الناس دي بيبقى عندها آه عرضه اكبر ان يحصل آه مرحله اكتئاب ما بعد الولاده لانه آه ده مهم جدا آه دلوقتي هنطلع لبريك او بر... يعني هنرجع مع حضراتكم تاني عشان نكمل موضوعنا عن الصحه النفسيه للمراه الحامل واكتئاب ما بعد الولاده optimization nutraceutical product line. Our first product is the Brain Shake, which contains plant-based nutrients to help with energy, focus, vitality, and joy. Our second product is turmeric, which is an Indian spice with anti-inflammatory and brain optimization properties. Our third product 
is the brain honey, which is a very sweet preparation that contains wonderful nutraceutical ingredients, cinnamon, ginger, and turmeric, in addition to the beauty of honey. To buy one of our Brain Tune Healthy products, please visit us on the Amazon link as seen on the screen or visit our website at www.drcinder.com. اهلا بيكم اعزائنا المشاهدين مره ثانيه وحلقتنا عن الصحه النفسيه للمراه الحامل واكتئاب ما بعد الولاده الحقيقه جالنا سؤال على الفيسبوك دكتور ساندر وي جات ا كويشن اون فيسبوك اباوت 6 مانث بريجننت ليدي شي از ديبريسد اند هير دكتور ريكومندد بروزاك سو شي از اسكينج اف اتس سيف تو بي اون بروزاك ذاتس ا فيري كومن اند اكسلنت كويشن از وي ديسكاست ايرليير ذا تريتمنت اوف ديبريشن ان بريجننسي ريلي از ا ريسك بينيفيت اناليسيس you know each mother is very different you know did they have a previous history of depression were they already on an antidepressant uh, what is the you know degree of depression that they are experiencing have they tried other methods such as psychotherapy acupuncture and supplementation and so on and so forth and still they are continuing to express uh, experience depression symptoms are all going to be weighed in the discussion that they would need to have with an OBGYN who is comfortable with treating depression in pregnancy or a psychiatrist who is comfortable in treating uh, depression in pregnancy. The, the, the bottom line is that uh, there is no one single answer for that, which is untreated symptoms are just as problematic and, you know, treating also has its own risks. And so they have to really weigh that risk benefit. And that's really a value decision that a mother has to make along with her spouse as well as the doctor. So it's a cost-benefit ratio. Basically. It's really a risk-benefit ratio. Lelsaida Fadila, who told us about the project, is it going to take or not? As I said, Dr. Sander, is it psychotherapy or other things other than the drugs that don't work? It will be that we will consider the benefit and the harm, as they say. Uh, لو حضرتك مكتئبه جدا ومحتاجه فعلا علاج تقدري تاخديه ولكن uh, الاضرار قليله ولكن انها ما زالت ممكن تحصل فهي في الاول وفي الاخر زي ما بنقول بنقيس الفائده مقابل الضرر uh, ولازم حضرتك تاخدي الديسيجن ده مع الدكتور بتاعك. دكتور ساندر وات ار ذا ذا اذر ميجر ايشوز اند فيلينجز ذات كام الونج وذ بوست بارتم ديبرشن. شور ابسوليوتلي. You know, as uh, Dr. Shosh was mentioning, and we were talking about it, that a woman can experience feelings of sadness, uh, feelings of guilt, feelings of anxiety, uh, and so forth, which are a normal part of the postpartum depression symptoms, if okay. you like. But there are several psychological concomitants, if you like, that go with those feelings, which is, uh, at the end of the day, there is a sense of loss, that their expectation that this motherhood would be you know, bright and cheerful, that adjustment has to be made that for a temporary period of time, if they've taken effective treatment, they'll get that back. But for that period of time, there's going to be a loss of autonomy, a personal freedom, because obviously they don't have Please. the same amount of energy to take care of the child. They have to take a little break for themselves. Okay. Uh, there's also a sense of loss of sexuality because uh, part of depression is uh, the lack of interest in several activities that were enjoyed previously, as Dr. Shosh alluded to that earlier. And one of them is a decrease in libido, which is a, can be a core symptom of depression. Mm -hmm. And a loss of interest in intercourse also would be a concomitant symptom of that. Uh, many women today uh, work actively, uh, both during pregnancy and in the postpartum period, and their ability to concentrate and to be able to really take the responsibility of taking care of the baby and the spouse, as well as work, might be compromised temporarily, but they would have to make that transition in their identity and come to terms with that and reconcile with that and so forth. And that's the work that, you know, 
uh, a trained therapist would be able to assist them with and so forth. So uh, ultimately it's all the uh, feelings of loss concerning opportunity and relationship and and you know the economics and so forth because of occupational right you and know sometimes they feel guilty to go back to work and leave the baby and because there's a conflict right exactly there's a conflict yeah. um so ali dr sandar and il hagat tania that it has to be a snake postpartum depression or a mass of normal like the ab ali rakam one and then the set of it has to know and he have had it nafsa hack insane and either to fuck it out i mean the hagat tania and he have to fuck it uh أنوثتها زي ما بنقول إن هي بتشعر ده داخليا وفي الحقيقة ده مش مش حقيقي ولكن هي بتحس إنها بتفقد أنوثتها بعد التغيرات البدنية والجسدية اللي حصلت فيها والتغيرات في الشكل طبعا نتيجة الحمل والكلام ده حاجة تانية بتفقد كمان رغبتها في فكرة العلاقة الحميمة ما بينها وما بين جوزها وده بيأثر طبعا على العلاقة كمان إحساسها بالذنب إنه هي لو ست بتشتغل آه فدايما بتحس بالذنب انها هترجع الشغل وتسيب البيبي فقال لي ان كل ده بيجي دايما مع الاكتئاب ما بعد الولاده ولازم دايما انه يبقى عندها سايكوثيرابيست شاطر او او يعني آه آه مش دكتور نفسي ولكن السايكوثيرابيست آه اللي بيشتغل معاها آه يبقى شاطر ويخليها تحاول تطلع من ده آه بسرعه آه Dr. Bennett, uh, the effect of postpartum depression, what is the effect of postpartum depression on infants or the future babies? The effect of, on children can be huge. Okay. And, and again, the take home message is get help as fast as possible. It's the wisest, you know, smartest, most loving thing you can do for your entire family. And then you don't have to worry about your children being affected. Right. Uh, but there can be behavioral problems, cognitive learning problems, there can be language difficulty, psychological problems. These children are often depressed later on in their own lives. So they're liable to depression too e as well. Exactly. Okay. So untreated depression in the parent can absolutely affect the child. But, but, but Dr. Sunder and I don't want to scare anybody. Okay. You know, th this is nothing to be afraid of. I mean, if, you, if you're suffering, get help like you would any other perinatal like any illness, other kind of and then disease. you don't have to worry about right. these bullets on the slides. Right. So, uh, Dr. Bennett, can I ask you the effect of the child on the child or the effect of the child on the child? I said that it affects a lot on the mental health of the child. بيبقى تحصيلهم اقل في الدراسه بيتكلموا متاخر عن الطبيعي عشان كده مهم جدا دايما انه المراه الحامل نهتم بصحتها النفسيه اثناء الحمل وفتره ما بعد الولاده لانه زي ما انا قلت بياثر على التحصيل المعرفي للاطفال في المدرسه بياثر على النمو الذهني بتاعهم بيخليهم يتكلموا متاخر قالت لي كمان بياثر على سلوك الاطفال لانه الاطفال اللي بيجي اللي بيجوا من ام مكتئبه Uh, عادة بيتعرضوا للاكتئاب uh, عند نقطة معينة من حياتهم بيبقوا عرضة للاكتئاب uh, أكتر من أي حد تاني. Uh, so how can we screen for postpartum depression? Is there any questionnaire that we can use? There are some basic screening questions. You want to find out if the new mom can sleep at nighttime when her baby is sleeping. Because remember, if there's any insomnia at all, she needs help. You want to ask her how her appetite is. Uh, does she... Is she not only is she eating, because some women are force feeding themselves, but they're not hungry. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that she's, that she's, that she's hungry. Yeah. If she feels, you want to find out if she feels that she has emotional support, somebody to lean on, somebody to talk to and be real with, so okay. to speak. You know, uh, and does, it, does she have the kind of physical support? Does she feel like she has breaks? Somebody coming over, taking care of her children. Uh, very, very important. Ask her how she feels about her emotional support. Uh, does she generally feel like herself? Okay. And I mentioned this uh, before. She... So basic five questions that we can That's ask. Right. Okay. الحقيقة أنا سؤالي كان عن هل في زي تست أو اختبار معين تقدر الست تجاوبه من خلاله من خلال الإجابات دي نقدر نعرف؟ قالت لي في خمس أسئلة مهمة جدا. آه بنديهم لكل ست في اثناء الحمل وفتره ما بعد الولاده اولهم على الاطلاق اذا انت بتقدري تنامي ولا لا شهيتك عامله ايه عشان دي نقطه مهمه جدا انت حاسه ان انت نفسك ولا حاسه ان انت ما عطيش زي الاول آه حاجه تانية مهمه جدا آه هي فكره المشاعر اللي انت بتحسيها آه هل السؤال الخامس المهم هل ان انت بتستمتعي آه بالحاجات اللي كنت بتستمتعي بيها ولا لا لو ثلاثه منهم عاده رجعوا 
بقى انه ده فعلا موجود عندي او في تغيرات في ده او انا ما عدتش نفسي زي الاول آه فبالتالي بنقدر نعرف انه ال ال السيده الحامل دي او ال ال اللي هي لسه والده دي آه عندها اكتئاب ونقدر نبتدي نتدخل فعلا آه آه بشكل طبي آه Dr. Bennett, what are the warning signs um, in postpartum depression? And some of these have been mentioned already, so I'll go through very quickly. If she's gaining a lot of weight or losing a lot of weight, that, that might not be normal. If, you're, if she's tired and rest doesn't help the fatigue. If things are too perfect in her house, if the pillows are fluffed just a particular way <laughs> and everything looks a little too good and she's like a couple of weeks postpartum, you want to make sure that, that she's able, don't just give her a compliment. You know, make sure that she's able to rest and she's eating well and she's taking care of herself and nurturing herself. Okay. Uh, if she's uncomfortable with the baby, if she is worrying so she can't relax, and also you're watching the baby's development. If it seems to be delayed, she might need help. Okay. Dr. Schindler, the, the, f the funny question that I usually get, um, that do fathers get postpartum depression as well? <laughs> Well, you know, I would allude to what was the initial, um, you know, uh, perspective, which is that the couple gets pregnant, okay. you know. <laughs> so if the couple can get pregnant, then the so couple both of them can, can get, get depressed. depressed right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's more common than what you think. Right. Um, uh, different studies code different statistics uh, that somewhere around 10% of fathers from, from the first trimester onwards to one year after delivery can become depressed. Wow. Yes, you know, so I think everyone's got to watch out there. Oh, right. um, and, uh, you know, other studies indicate that a quarter, 25% or so, at three to six months become depressed. And there could be multiple reasons from the fact that now they are finding that their principal attachment, which is their spouse, is now divided in her attention with the baby as well as them. So they kind of feel Feels that... neglected. Neglected, exactly. They yeah. feel neglected. And they feel physically uh, separated. And around the same time, there's a new arrival. So there's more probably, you know, work-related challenges okay. uh, and so forth. So they have to make that. So they may be stress-related to the work. Um, and the role of the partner, um, you know, so the spouse, uh, if she's particularly depressed, uh, if the mother is depressed, then that means that the mother is unable to really provide that much of uh, attention right. and so forth. So... Uh, that correlation with depression in partner is important to note. So the fathers do get depressed uh, because extra like financial responsibilities too as well. As well, as well. But the good news, there's like more tax off. Is, is tax write off. Tax write off. I mean, like, right? Uh, <laughs> so and so, Ali, Doctor Sander, can I end? Hal al abe? Can I end? Would 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 a soal? يعني حس مهم جدا وكتير من الناس مش بتتفهمه قوي. هل الاباء كمان بيجي بيحصل لهم اكتئاب اثناء الحمل مراتهم او بيحصل لهم اكتئاب ما بعد الولاده فالحقيقه الاجابه كانت يعني بالنسبه لي مفاجاه انه 10% من الاباء او من الازواج بيحصل لهم ديبريشن او بيحصل لهم اكتئاب زيهم زي الحوامل بالظبط وزي ما دكتور ساندر قال اذا احنا اتفقنا من الاول الاثنين هيبقوا حامل فالاثنين يقدروا يحصل لهم ديبريشن في نفس الوقت 10% بيحصل لهم اكتئاب في اول ثلاث شهور، 25% من الازواج بيحصل لهم اكتئاب في ثاني ثلاث شهور نتيجه طبعا انه لو الزوجه حصل لها اكتئاب نتيجه قال لي كمان انه بيحصل نوع من زياده الاعباء الماليه على الاسره، البيبي اللي جاي عايز مصاريف وهكذا فالاب بيحس بالمسؤوليه ممكن يحصل له نوع من الاكتئاب، كثير منهم بيحصل لهم الاكتئاب بعد الولاده نتيجه طبعا ودي ثقافة مهمة جدا المفروض نتخلص منها أحيانا بيبقى غصب عن الزوجة بتبتدي تهمل الأب تماما وتوجه كل الاتنشن أو بتاعها للبيبي فالأب بيحس أنه بقى مهمل فبيزيد نسبة اكتئاب وزي ما أنا بقولت كمان فقدان العلاقة الحميمية لفترة طويلة ممكن يعمل اكتئاب للزوج كمان كل العوامل دي بتحصل للزوج كمان فمهم جدا أن احنا مش بس نهتم بالصحة النفسية للمرأة الحامل ولكن كمان الزوج دايما لازم يبقى آه كل الاعراض دي لو ظهرت يبقى آه متيقن ليها وفاهم انه آه ان هو كمان محتاج مساعده زي مراته بالظبط. Uh, so Dr. Sander, what's the medical treatment and management for postpartum depression? Uh, when I talk here, I talk about like medication, um, is there a nutrition system? Sure, absolutely. I think uh, again, a very important question and uh, both Dr. Shosh and I work collaboratively on trying to manage based upon a mother's, you know, requirements and condition and so on and so forth. 
Uh, but the key, as I said earlier, was risk-benefit decision-making. Yeah. Because what we do know is that untreated depression is going to last for a long time, right. and that could cause chronic depression, uh, what we also call dysthymia and so forth, which is not very good for attachment and for the mother. Um, treating depression, of course, with medications has been um, subject to a lot of research, and we have a lot of robust data. Uh, the challenge is that uh, if the mother is choosing to breastfeed, then some of these medications could be excreted in breast milk. But then again, we have tons of data with regard to the safety of these medications and what proportion of that is excreted in the breast milk and affects the baby. So is it safe to use those medications during the breastfeeding period? So uh, the answer is that it's a risk-benefit analysis Still. in a sense that not all medications are the same, right. just as not all mothers with postpartum depression are going to be the same. Right. So depending upon the medication, the half-life of its metabolites, and what is excreted to what extent, uh, some medications are excreted to a very minimal extent and will not affect the baby from the perspective of the data that we see. Other medications that might be required if the depression is to such severity that the mother is suicidal, for example, and so forth. So we have to really weigh that risk benefit. Do you have uh, preference issues. or recommendations for certain medication over others or it doesn't matter? So uh, I really think that it has to do with uh, the severity of depression, the uh, issue related to breastfeeding. And if the mother prefers to actually have a combination of psychotherapy with medication or prefers alternative treatments and so forth, uh, but uh, it's a decision that they have to take with a trained psychiatrist who is comfortable with treating uh, postpartum depression. Um, and you had talked also about, um, you know, all, what are the other alternatives? The, the other options other the than The other medications. options, absolutely. So the mother might say, I don't want to be on antidepressants or other medications. We have very effective options with regard to transcranial magnetic stimulation, uh, which is like a dental chair. And uh, through magnetic pulses, uh, you can actually improve the state. And we have plenty of data. And we have severe... a picture for, for it, actually, yes, so we can you. show it absolutely. to our audience. Yeah. You know? And we have that at our center, you know, okay. and we treat uh, mothers with uh, it, both during pregnancy and postpartum. And TMS is very efficacious, uh, ECT for severe depression, and neurofeedback, which is a non-pharmacological, non-systemic, wonderful way to complement psychotherapy, which Dr. Shosh is going to now speak about. So non-medication options exist. The key, of course, as we keep emphasizing is get the treatment because right. You will be well, your children will be well, and society will be very happy. The key is with to recognize decision. you're depressed and ask for help. I ask think for that's help. the key. I'm going to ask Dr. Sundar about depression or depression after the birth of the child, because we talked about the birth of the child, and we said that the birth of the child is the birth of the child, and we said that the birth of the child is the birth of the child, and the birth of the child الاضرار من الفوائد لو الاضرار اقل بكثير من الفوائد ممكن تاخد ميديكيشن او علاج اثناء فتره الحمل دلوقتي كان سؤالي لي على العلاج الاكتئاب ما بعد الولاده فقال لي احنا عندنا دايما اثنين كاتيجوريز كبار او او اول واحد هو الادويه والعلاج الطبي او التدخل الطبي والتدخل النفسي فهو ابتدى وشرح التدخل الطبي قال لي ان احنا عندنا ميديكيشنز او ادويه آه نقدر نتدخل بيها سالته آه لانه كتير جدا من السيدات دايما بتسالنا السؤال ده هل ده بيأثر على فتره الرضاعه ولا لا واللي هو السؤال التقليدي بتاعنا هينزل مع اللبن للبيبي ولا لا وهيأثر على البيبي ولا لا آه فقال لي آه معظم الاستاديز بتقول انه في انواع معينه من الميديكيشن بتنزل بنسبه قليله جدا في اللبن وما بتاثرش على البيبي فلو حضرتك بترضعي حالا وبتعاني من اكتئاب ما بعد الولادة تقدر تاخدي الميديكيشنز دي بس زي ما انا قلت الاهم دايما ان احنا نعرف انه في اكتئاب ونعرف ازاي نتعالج معاه الحاجة التانية قال لي انه في ادوات بنقدر نستخدمها زي الاي سي تي ودي بتبقى زي الكهرباء بنقدر نعالج بيها المخ وبتساعد جدا في الديبرشن وبالذات النوع اللي ما بيقدرش نعالجه بالادوية دايما بنروح للاي سي تي وبيبقى سيف في الحم آه حاجة تانية مهمة جدا التي ام اس ودكتور ساندر واحد من الناس اللي بتعمله جدا وده شايفين له صورة دلوقتي نوع من الأجهزة بنقدر نستخدمه مع الديبرشن لو الناس مش عايزة تاخد ميديكيشن آه الحاجة الأخيرة النيورو فيدباك أو دي أجهزة برضو آه والحقيقة دكتور ساندر من الناس لكل اللي عايشين هنا واحد من الناس البايونيرز في, في, في الحكاية دي أو رواد المجال ده هنا 
فاي حد محتاج مساعده ممكن يكلمه او يتصل بيه او يشوفه في الاوفيس بتاعه لان هو واحد من الناس اللي فعلا كويسين قوي في المناطق في المناطق دي I was talking about you're one of the pioneers in neurofeedback and, and TMS. So if anybody in Southern California need help, can contact your office. Yes, and absolutely. And I would just also mention that we just got awarded a research study when you're talking about the treatments, which is a hormone-based uh, research study by SAGE. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a principal investigator on that study. So those who are in Southern California, please touch base with us uh, because it is a wonderful study that is going to provide you know, more data with regard to effective treatments for postpartum Very depression. quick before I go to the psychological management, yeah. is there any criteria for those studies to join? Uh, the basic criteria are listed on our website, but essentially, uh, you know, mothers who have experienced it within the first four weeks and they have experienced depression and also in the last trimester would be eligible. They just have to have been within the first six months uh, of, um, you know, the delivery. And those women would be, you know, eligible. The thing is, Doctor Sander, he also does research on the subject of pregnancy after the birth, and he has a research project that he is working on at the moment. For those of you who are interested in the new drug that he is working on, or who are part of the study, there are some criteria listed on their website. We can talk to them if they want to be part of the study, and we will give them a referral. Doctor Shosh, the psychological uh, treatment or management or Dr. Shosh wellness plan. So mm -hmm. can you talk to us about that, please? Sure, the Dr. Shosh wellness plan. You know, most of these that I'm about to mention are used for prevention, not only treatment. I mean, Dr. Sunder and I would much rather be preventing these illnesses rather than treating them. Prevention so, is better than cure always. Uh, absolutely. So have realistic expectations of motherhood. Throw out the myths such as my needs don't matter anymore and I should be able to do this all by myself. Your breastfeeding should always be easy. You know, throw those out. Communication with your partner. Very important. Husbands and wives should be talking together. Don't assume anything. Don't assume that there's a plan for who's going to be on duty at nighttime or who's going to bring the food or who's going to talk about it. Communicate your wishes and expectations. Nutrition, Dr. Sunder, uh, is, is sharing wonderful things with that particular area. Uh, so I will go on to exercise. If a woman is healing uh, from stitches or, uh, or if she's in pregnant, pregnant and on bed rest even, there are always exercises that can be done to oxygenate the brain, to help not only the body, but to help the, the mind as well. So that's, that would be the beginning part of the wellness strategy. Okay. أنا سؤالي للدكتور بنت كان عن إيه هو الطرق العلاج النفسي قالت لي رقم واحد إنه إحنا لازم نفهم كل أم إن هي يبقى عندها توقعات واقعية لمرحلة الحمل ومرحلة ما بعد الولادة فإن إحنا لازم نعلمهم إيه هو الحمل إيه اللي هيعدوا بيه إيه اللي هيعدوا بيه بعد الولادة فكل ده مهم جدا الحاجة الثانية اللي نصحت بيها كل الحوامل أو <تصفيق> عفوا كل اللي لسه يعني جايبين بيبي في اول خالص انه يبقى في وسائل تواصل فعاله بين الزوجه وزوجها تقول له على اللي مضايقها لو لو هي عايزاه يعمل حاجات معاها لو هي تعبانه ممكن تنام وهو اللي ياخد باله من البيبي ولكن دايما التواصل بين الزوجين بيسهل كل حاجه من الحاجات السيكولوجيه المهمه جدا ان احنا نشتغل على التغذيه التغذيه نقطه مهمه جدا في فتره ما بعد الولاده وهجيلها بالتفصيل دلوقتي وهسأل دكتور ساندر عليها الحاجة الرابعة المهمة جدا تمارين رياضية هي هنجيبها لكم في مرة نوريكم ايه نوع التمارين الرياضية اللي ممكن تتعمل في, في لعلاج اكتئاب ما بعد الولادة والحقيقة بتبقى انواع من التمارين رائعة جدا وكلها بتبقى حوالين البيبي بحيث ان احنا نزود البوند او نزود الرابطة ما بين الام والبيبي يعني تحس بيه اكتر كمان زي ما قال الدكتور بنت زيادة نسبة الأكسجين اللي واصل للمخ بيساعد جدا 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 في فكرة اكتئاب ما بعد الولادة. When it comes to nutrition, Dr. Sander, what's your recommendation, like nutrition system wise uh, for postpartum depression? Yeah, and as Dr. Shosh was mentioning, nutrition is key because after all, you want to nourish your brain and you want to avoid, if you're particularly not keen to take medications and so forth, it's important to balance your nutrition with small regular meals, high in complex carbohydrates, essential fats and proteins. Essential fats are key because they are the part of the lining of the nervous system. 
and they are important from the standpoint of breast milk as well. And so it's key that um, omega-3 fatty acids found in flax oil, in fish, walnuts, um, almonds, a strong B vitamin uh, supplementation, zinc and magnesium, and we ourselves have a honey product that okay. has got turmeric, cinnamon, and ginger. We saw have, the promos for it. Yeah, usually. right. and that has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties, and so on and so forth would be very beneficial. Uh, the key, again, is to remember that the neurochemicals are being altered in depression. Right. So if your serotonin is low, you want to be taking foods that help your recovery, such as dark chocolate, cottage cheese, bananas, spinach, pineapple, and so on, that will elevate uh, some of your serotonin levels. Uh, so, Ali, Dr. Sander, can I ask you what is the responsibility of the treatment? If anyone has been from the birth of the child, or not the disease of the disease, the disease of the natural disease, that we have seen, the disease. ايه طرق او ايه سيستم التغذيه المناسب للناس دي في الفتره دي؟ فقال لي رقم واحد ان احنا بنركز على السكريات بشكل انها تاخد اكتر من يعني تقريبا حوالي خمس وجبات خفيفه بيبقى فيهم سكريات خفيفه عشان ده بيساعدها. الحاجه الثانيه ان احنا بنركز على الاوميجا 3 ودي ماده موجوده في الاسماك وموجوده في المكسرات بشكل كبير جدا. ماده الاوميجا 3 بتساعد انه هي بتساعد الاكتئاب بشكل عام وبتساعد في الناقلات الكيميائيه اللي موجوده في المخ ودي نقطه مهمه فيتامين ب المركب مهم جدا 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 انه الستات اللي تبقى عليه اثناء فتره الحمل واثناء فتره ما بعد الولاده لانه فيتامين ب المركب بيساعد جدا في موضوع اكتئاب ما بعد الولاده الحاجه الاخيره قال انه الاكتئاب ما بعد الولاده بيبقى ليه علاقه خاصه واكيد حضراتكم سمعتونا كذا مرة بنتكلم على ده ليه علاقة خاصة بالمركب الكيميائي في المخ اللي اسمه السيريتونين انه بيقل قوي اثناء الديبرشن او اثناء الاكتئاب فبناخد آه يعني وجبات معينة او اكلات معينة تساعد ان احنا نزود نسبة السيريتونين في المخ وقال الشوكولاتة الغامقة مش العادية عشان ما حدش يعني يهيس قوي الدارك تشوكلت مهمة جدا آه الجبن مهمة جدا الموز مهم جدا آه السبانخ مهمه جدا كمان الباين ابل او الاناناس مهمه جدا في الفتره دي كل دول آه يعني بيساعدوا جدا في فكره ان احنا نزود نسبه السيروتونين وبالتالي آه نساعد الاكتئاب واتس ذا اذر بارت اوف دكتور شوش ويلنس بلان ذا اذر بارت سليب ايفن بريست فيدينج مذرز كان هاف كان كان ورك اوت ا ستراتيجي so that they have some uninterrupted hours at nighttime, and that can help to protect the serotonin level that Dr. Sunder was just talking about. Extremely important brain chemical. Emotional support, someone, again, to be honest with and real with, somebody to give her support, physical support, regular breaks throughout the week, uh, a couple of times a week for a couple of hours away from children, away from house, just to nurture and feel like Recharge your energy back. Recharge again. herself, but especially if she's already suffering. Those are all prevention. And by the way, in, in, in postpartum depression for dummies, there's an entire chapter I devoted to prevention. So one doesn't need to go through this again. And I want to say one thing, like quick, postpartum depression for dummies. It's the best seller book on Amazon for 2015. Thank you. So if, she, if she's already suffering or if she knows she's high risk, absolutely get the individual therapy. Work with a healthcare practitioner who specializes whenever possible. It's not good enough just to go to anybody. You go to a specialist whenever possible who really understands the perinatal uh, issues and also healthcare practitioners. Dr. Sunder is phenomenal with his alternative treatments, not only medication, and you'll be set. You'll be on your way. الحقيقة باقي التعليمات أو الحاجات المهمة جدا تتعمل إذا حصل اكتئاب ما بعد الولادة إن أنت تهتمي جدا بنومك لأنه ده مهم جدا نامي كل ما البيبي بتاعك ينام لأنه ولو ما قدرتيش تعملي ده اسألي مساعدة زي ما أنا قلت الكوميونيكيشن أو الإيموشنال سبورت وده مش دور الزوج بس ده دور كل الأسرة اللي حوالين الزوجة في الوقت ده سواء الأم والأب أو الزوج ده بيبقى مهم جدا إن احنا نساعد بنتنا او نساعد مراتاتنا في فكره انه آه يعني نباكر دايما ان احنا نسبورت هير ونعمل لها تعضيد في في الفتره دي لانه ده مهم جدا آه كمان مهم جدا انه الام تفهم انه هي مش مش نباتش 24 ساعه مع البيبي ان هي ممكن تاخد بريكس من البيبي آه ساعتين كل اسبوع 
حتى لو هنفصلهم ساعة وساعة كل أسبوع عشان تجدد طاقتها لأنه ده مهم جدا وفي الأول وفي الآخر إن ده زي ما اتفقنا إنه ممكن يبقى مع أدوية أو ممكن ما يبقاش مع أدوية It was really a pleasure and honor for me to be with you guys today and I really feel honored to sit in front of you and learn about postpartum depression. It was very informative for the audience. Thank you so much. Thank you very Our much. Our pleasure. Thank you. الحقيقة بنشكر حضراتكم النهاردة على حسن استماعكم في لموضوعنا المهم جدا للصحة النفسية للمرأة الحامل واكتئاب ما بعد الولادة. لو ليكوا أي أسئلة برضو على الموضوع ابعتوا لنا على صفحتنا على الفيسبوك طول الأسبوع الجاي. هنبعت الأسئلة دي للاثنين دكاترة اللي معانا وهم هيردوا عليها إن شاء الله. نشكركم مرة تانية ميري كريسماس لكل الناس اللي بتعيد يوم 7 يناير ونشوفكم على خير الأسبوع الجاي وحلقة جديدة من وايت كوت